Costa Rica's unarmed neutrality. So I guess this is going to be the opposite side, or, you know, uh, twin to Miller's whole thing. Paz, you said Costa Rica has no army, right? Correct. Article 12 of the Constitution declared that the army as a permanent institution is abolished. It does permit us to organize armed forces for national defense based on inter-American treaties. Only temporarily, then. In effect, yes. But in the years since the Constitution took effect, Costa Rica has not once raised an army. Paz, how does your country defend itself without an army? Especially in a rough neighborhood like Central America. With the right kind of diplomacy. If we live up to our ideals and earn the respect of other countries, the international community will support us. The two times Nicaragua actually did invade, the conflict was resolved diplomatically under OAS auspices. Doesn't that leave you depending on the U.S. after all? American influence is unmatched, it is true. San Jose was critical of American policy at the time, but America supported us all the same. It was because we practiced peaceful diplomacy. That is what I like to think. That's one way to approach it, sure. But there are countries out there who will use force no matter how bad it looks. Maybe so. I know my way of thinking probably looks naive to you, but it is not like we expect peace without working for it. Diplomacy is a battle in itself, and we have to make the effort to seek out causes of misfortune and nip them in the bud. It was that kind of thinking that got me trapped in their base. <laughs> I'm not blaming you. You haven't done anything wrong. Didn't Paz have a friend that we were looking for? And I thought it wasn't Cecilia. Maybe it was. I haven't really talked to any. Let me listen to any of her tapes at all. The army was abolished 25 years ago, the year after the Civil War. I learned about the sorrow of Civil War from a very young age. The futility of countrymen fighting each other. And the tragedy. Costa Rica learned the hard way. That is why it abolished its army. It decided to pour its efforts into education instead. More teachers than soldiers was the slogan. Education is essential, no question. Even Che used to teach reading and writing in between guerrilla campaigns. Costa Rica was poor at the time. We did not have many resources. I suppose we had to pick one or the other. The military or the schools. Huh. Kaz was telling me Japan has a peace constitution, too. Mm -hmm. That is right. Apparently, when Costa Rica was drafting its constitution, they looked to the Japanese as a model. Only, Japan's constitution renounces war itself. Unlike Costa Rica. But, Japan has a self-defense force, right? That I do not get. I think I will ask Mr. Mueller about it next time I see him. He said he used to be in the JSDF. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're a curious one, are you? Don't study too hard. I'll talk your ears off. What was that you were saying? Peace is not the natural state of men? You said you learned it in school. That is right. They are the words of the German philosopher Immanuel Kant. In 1795, he wrote a book titled Perpetual Peace. Kant argued that it is precisely because peace is unnatural that we have to make it ourselves. How? That is what his book is about. Is the concept starting to sound interesting now? Not really. <laughs> I belong in a more natural world. Is that so? My grandparents died in the Civil War. If only we had been at peace, they would not have lost their lives. You actually wish for war? It's not like I want to hurt innocent civilians. But if someone attacks you, what are you supposed to do? A country needs the strength to defend itself. Otherwise it faces invasion, oppression, political subjugation. If they would simply stop using force to tangle with each other, countries would not need force to defend themselves. And how would you guarantee that? I... Sorry, but you have to understand how the world works in order to protect the ones you love. That's not to say ideals aren't important, too. They are. 
You are right, Snake. Thanks. Peace. Huh. Hmm. Actually sounded pretty forced, so I guess that's pretty good. She's like, thanks. Well, let's see, this is six minutes almost. Costa Rica's forests are more diverse than you might expect. Not all of them are tropical rainforests. Costa Rica is close to the equator, it is true, but it is also very mountainous. Yeah, I see what you mean. Go up 4,000 feet in elevation and the temperature drops more than 7 degrees. There are basically three types of forests. The lowlands are covered in tropical rainforests, the highlands by tropical cloud forests, and areas where there is a dry season have tropical dry forests. The lowlands along the Caribbean coast are mostly covered by hot, humid, tropical rainforests. What most people envision when they think of jungle. The closely packed trees spread their branches out at great heights to soak up the sun. Their shade makes it dark near the ground, so be careful. Of course, with so little light, few plants can grow on the ground, so it might actually be easier to walk. So even if you could photosynthesize, it wouldn't do you any good. Photosynthesize? <laughs> people cannot do that. Hmm. Most people, anyway. God damn it, Snake. Keeps having PTSD flashbacks. Confusing everyone. Areas with a distinct dry season, like the Pacific Coast, have tropical dry forests. During the dry season, the trees drop their leaves. It gives you a clearer view, but at the same time, there are fewer places to hide. So be careful. Sounds dull. It's <laughs> not really. A lot of trees flower during the dry season, including my favorite, the Tabebuya. It has these amazingly vivid yellow flowers. The cloud forests cover the central mountainous region of the country. They are perpetually shrouded in fog. You get wet just standing there. It is as if the entire forest is inside a cloud. Must make for poor visibility. It does, but beauty too. It is like being lost in some mystical green labyrinth. I'd rather not get lost if that's okay. <laughs> the forests are also home to lots of rare animals, especially bright colored frogs. They like the humidity. Morpho butterflies, oh boy. You know that butterfly painted on Peace Walker? Any idea what that is? It is a Morpho. A Pallades Morpho, if I'm not mistaken. Pallades Morpho? Uh-huh. It is the most common type of Morpho in Costa Rica. Huh. It has these gorgeous metallic blue wings that shimmer in the light. You can see them even from a distance. You mean they reflect light? Correct. It is called structural color. Morpho scales have tiny bumps on them that interfere with the light and make them look blue. The space between the bumps corresponds to the wavelength of the blue light. Let me see if I get this. Mm -hmm. So if you could change the spacing, you'd end up seeing a different color. That is the principle. I heard somewhere it is being researched as a way to color cloth without dye. Think of the camouflage you could make with that. Is that all you can think of? Hey, it's important. What I don't get is why they'd put a butterfly on Peace Walker. Maybe because it looks pretty. I hope that's all it is. <laughs> it looks pretty. Probably a stranger love or Hal can answer that. Costa Rica is said to have about 87,000 species of living things. That is about 5% of all the known species in the world. A tiny place like this? Huh. I'll be damned. I want to protect that biological diversity. When diversity is lost, the environment weakens. Just look at the plantations. I think I know what you mean. It's like trying to assemble a unit from similar guys. It usually doesn't work out. <laughs> Throw a few square pegs in there and everything falls into place. There are so many species here that a lot of them have not even been classified yet. I am hoping I can help do that someday. 
kind of like a parataxonomist. Para... Say that again. Parataxonomist. Someone who helps a taxonomist. Oh. Uh -huh. Huh. I thought you were going to say it had something to do with parachutes. <laughs> You're weird. Uh -huh. The Development Corporation of Costa Rica, or CODESA, was established two years ago. Since President Odubar was elected this year, the state has been putting a lot more effort into development. The corporate state, so to speak. Growth is good and all, but there is one thing that bugs me. What's that? I bugs. cannot help but wonder whether CODESA is not just a front for the CIA. You mean what the professor was saying about the CIA mercenaries posing as security guards? They were using CODESA as camouflage? I am worried that development is going to destroy the forests. But I do not suppose it has anything to do with this. Well, we'll get to herself next vid. See ya!